Hello and welcome to all of you astrology friends out there. This is your horoscope for all the signs. I'll start first of all to talk a little bit in general about this full moon in Sagittarius and then I'm going to have a look for each individual sign. It's a full moon in Sagittarius depending on where you're living. It's around the 4th of June 3rd of June, 4th of June of 2023, and the moon will be at 13 degrees of Sagittarius, opposing the sun, because it's a full moon, at 13 degrees of Gemini. So what is this all about? Let's talk about this. First of all, what is the flavor of this full moon? Full moons in Sagittarius are one of my favorite full moons. Why? Because Sagittarius and Gemini, a fire sign, Sagittarius, and Gemini, an air sign, they are the party uh, people of the Zodiac. They certainly are. <clears throat> and they are very witty and very smart and all about adventure, exploring, and enjoying yourself, having fun, enjoying yourself, and... Um, Connect in a way like that, in a fiery way, in an inspired way, but also in a very airy kind of way, which is Gemini. So mostly when you have uh, a party to organize, for instance, do it on a moon in, in Gemini or a moon in uh, Sagittarius, then it will be so full of ambiance, or I don't know the word in English. Um, so with really that lust for life. So we all are going to feel this energy somewhere in our chart. It's also a very kind of mental energy because um, it is represented in astrology as the third house and the ninth house, which are the, uh, you could say, learning houses, the mental houses, the houses of the reasoning, which is Gemini and picking up information, all sorts of information in a practical way. And then you could say Sagittarius is more like the bigger picture. It's like, okay, when I see something happening here and I don't know what's going on, when you put a little bit of a distance or you put yourself a little bit more detached and looking at a distance, you have an overview, you know, what's, uh, what's happening. If I always use that example of when you are um, waiting uh, and you are in what we call a traffic jam, for instance. Last, uh, uh, yesterday I had that, you know, a traffic jam and you're stopping and you don't know what's going on. You're in the traffic jam, but you don't know what's going on and why it is. Why? The question why uh, is very Sagittarian-like. So we all are going to, uh, you could say, have an opportunity to understand the why way better and to focus on that, you know, why purpose, it's all very Sagittarian like. So when you're standing in the traffic jam and you don't know why, you know, you have to wait, you know that you have to wait, but you don't know, do I have to wait an hour? Will I have to wait half an hour, 10 minutes, maybe the whole day? Because what has happened there has, you know, you kind of become insecure of the not having enough knowledge, which is again, very Sagittarian like. So you're wondering, right? And you're probably, you know, filling in the blanks in the wrong way because you don't know, you don't have that bigger picture view. You don't have the knowledge. You're standing there, you know, you have to wait, but it's not fun. Now, if you would have that Sagittarian view, you would be able to go outside of your car, for instance, and, you know, go into the helicopter and the helicopter just rises and sees what's going on. Oh, you know, it was not an accident at all. It was a bridge that was broken, for instance. So, yeah, you see that with your helicopter view. So you see it's going to take a, a, a long while. And um, so when you come down again, you turn around, you say, OK, I'm not going to wait here uh, for like the whole day, I'm going to take an alternative route and off you go. That's the power of Sagittarius. It gives you, um, information and you decide what you're going to do with it, but it's very abstract information and it's bigger picture information. So we all are going to get that. 
out of this Sagittarius full moon. We are going to have the bigger picture. We are, and that takes responsibility, right? It, takes, it, it doesn't mean to say, because you have all the information, that it makes it less painful. No, but it's like, you know, knowledge is power in a way, because then you feel like you have it more under control and you feel like you have a part of choosing how you deal with the reality. And that's the whole part of this full moon in Sagittarius. We will have that helicopter view because of the full moon. But another thing, let's have a look at what's going on with the other planets during that day. Now, a, a fantastic thing that is happening is that the ruler of, it's always interesting and always needed, you could say, um, to look at the ruler of this full moon, which is in this case Jupiter, because the ruler of Sagittarius is Jupiter. So what is Jupiter doing? And Jupiter is there in the very grounded, down-to-earth, raw, full of awareness of the, fi the five senses. It's in Taurus. And it wants to have comfort and it wants to be practical and it wants to enjoy the little things and it wants to be here in the here and the now. That's Taurus. So Jupiter is there in that sign, but it just jumped over the North Node. So Jupiter is at four degrees of Taurus and the North Node is actually going backwards. So it just went, it danced over you could say the Jupiter danced over the North Node. So Ju the North Node is now at three degrees or it will be at three degrees of uh, Taurus then two degrees, one degree, and it will shift eventually around July in Aries. So is that significant? It's super significant. It shows like a double whammy of um, Jupiter conjunct the North Node is a bit like a, a, a Jupiter on steroids, you could say, because the North Node, which is not a planet, but it's a point in the horoscope that refers to your future, your um, growth, which is also associated with Jupiter. So when you've got those two together, it's like a double, double growth, you could say. It's like a double, double helicopter view. So yes, I think the title is going to be the helicopter view if I'm not going to forget it. But anyway, the, of this video, I mean. So we all are going to have the helicopter view, first of all, by the moon in Sagittarius. Second of all, because there's Jupiter with the North Node. So we are going to see in the house that I'm going to describe in a minute for you and each and every sign, I'm going to describe where this Jupiter is for you with this North Node. And that is the part that is the most uncomfortable because the most comfortable part to take is the known part is this where the south node is where your talents are the the road that you already took in formal life so to speak and it's not a bad road but it's a road that you know you're not growing when you're not being challenged right we all know that we all know that if we're not gonna try out to ride the bike for the first time in our lives and we're not going to fall and, and do this and that. We're never going to be able to ride a bike, right? We have to get out of that comfort zone. That is the Jupiter with the North Node. So actually it shows that where you are most afraid of, where you have to go most out of your comfort zone is actually your solution for your growth. And it has to do with value because it's in Taurus. So it's, it has to do with raising the bar. It has to do with raising your values. And it's easier said than done, right? You can say, oh, yeah, I'm, um, for instance, in a relationship where you put in like 90, 90% and they put in 10%. Raising the bar, you know what I mean, right? Is that you lower a bit your investment so that you give that other person a chance, the space to come to you a bit more. If that is not happening, reality comes in, and that is com uh, the, comf the uncomfortable is that raw reality. Will you be able to face that? And actually, it's a good thing if that person doesn't come to you. It means that uh, 
you have to lower and you want to stick to that person. You have to lower your bar for the, for, for as long as you're in that relationship. So these are very huge teams actually. And they are presented to us. And we always do, you know, this is energy. It's nature. So the nature of the astrology now is like, look, this is possible. You can raise the bar. You can get an upgrade in your life for sure. But you will have to get out of your comfort zone. You will have to probably do the opposite of what you're always doing. And choosing for the most difficult road that... Um, to get where your growth is and where your value is in, in a healthy way. You know, Taurus wants healthiness, wants comfort and healthiness. Is it a triple whammy? Absolutely. Another thing that is so exciting, it's not only that information that is given to us by the moon in Sagittarius, that is given to us with the conjunction of Jupiter with the North Node. The third thing that is like a triple whammy, I don't know if that is a good English, but anyway, that is a triple whammy of knowledge, information. Um, and I have written down here, unexpected knowledge is the Mercury with the Uranus. So whilst all this is going on, Mercury is conjoining with Uranus or it, it just went over Uranus. So another like you could say in the face, the wake up call, here it is, here it is. It's um, raw, it's real, because it's also in Taurus. It's raw, it's real. This is the information. What are you going to do? Are you going to put your head in the sand? That's possible. I mean, you know, sometimes we need to have a longer process of pain or, or whatever it is, right? We, we need that sometimes. And, but it's an opportunity. So a tree, tree double whammy of an opportunity of information of course i'm loving it this is astrology at its peak you could say when it comes to opportunities for growth really it's nothing more and nothing less so i'm going to be not really uh, spending too much time for each in particular side because it's very simple it's like taurus right there's an emphasis on taurus with all those planets you know that i just described the Mercury with the Uranus, the Jupiter with the North Node. It's all in Taurus. So um, that's the area where we need to go, where we need to raise the bar. And um, so we decide what we're doing with it. I'm just an astrologer giving you the message. So let's delve into it. Do I need to say more? Yes, I need to say one little thing more. So because I always want to know the energy of that day. We also have Venus opposite Pluto. And it's approaching, so it's not yet done. So um, what shows this is that a Venus is at the very last degree of Cancer. It's going to jump into Leo uh, the day after the full moon. And when it does that, it's going to jump into Pluto. So this means, again, an opportunity, but not an easy one, but an opportunity to be very authentic in our relationships, to things that are hidden in the relationship, to bring it up, to look at it, and to deal with it and to choose, to choose. Venus is about choice. It's about choosing wisely. What am I going to do? Am I going to do job A, job B? For, am I going to put up with this person or not? Or, you know, it's choice. And Venus opposite Pluto means that you're going to make a choice and it's going to be life changing because that's Pluto. It's like no way back when we choose. There's no way back possible. So, um, yeah, it's like when you kiss someone, you can't do, undo the kiss. The kiss was done, right? It's Venus opposite Pluto. It, it is there. So what an energy this is and um, what an opportunity we have. So let's delve into it and let's have a look at what specific area is this. Um, for some people, it's going to be more like relationships. For others, it's going to be more work and so on. So let's delve into this. For Aries people, this is very nice. Why? Because this moon in Sagittarius trines Aries energy. So the chances in general, of course, are going to be that it's a very, very nice full moon for you. Uh, the ninth house. So this is this full moon, this illumination 
is all about knowledge. It's all about understanding of the bigger picture. It's all about that. There, there can be made some huge epiphanies here in your understanding of the helicopter view. But where all this Taurus energy is for you is your second house. So this is about uh, things that you can do to raise the bar, literally to raise your confidence, to raise your standards, but also your finances. So especially with Jupiter and the North Node, you could be really dealing now with maybe a promotion that you uh, um, are ready for or maybe for a new job where uh, you they always say if you want to earn more money, get another job, get a new job, go find a new job. And that is true, right? Jupiter in your second house, it can give you that. We're not giving you that. The planets are not doing anything, but you know what I mean. So focus on what is uncomfortable for you to improve your financial stability, to look at it, to not run away for it, to put up a structure, to put up... You're going to have insights there with Mercury Uranus. There's going to be information that maybe before was lacking. The Mercury went retrograde, right? Um, a couple of weeks ago. So there is new information coming in and it's going to be the reality of it. But again, with this moon trining your ninth house, it seems like you're going places, literally and figuratively. You could be traveling more. You could be teaching, learning, you name it. Torians, well, this is all about you, isn't it? Again, again, the spotlight is really on you. But this moon is in your eighth house, this illumination, um, this understanding, this bright light of Sagittarian insight is in the eighth house, which is a hidden house, which is deep psychological understanding, uh, intuition. So my, watch your intuition. If your intuition is saying, nah, this is not good, or this is probably nine out of 10 cases, you're right. You're right. So test it. Test your intuition. In other words, confront. Because all this energy of Taurus is in your sign. You're having all this energy in your sign. So you are going to make the epiphany. You are going to do the conversation. You are going to be the one that speaks and that people say, what, what, are, what are you saying? Dear Torian, you're always so nice. What are you saying? And uh, some people might like it as well and, and say to you, oh, finally, finally, where were you? So you are going to speak your truth for sure. But it's after you have gone through this catharsis or this psychological understanding of the self and the fears and battling those fears and understanding those fears in a bigger picture. It's a transformation for you, for sure. And it's about relationship because the first house is you. You and, of course, um, the seventh house is reflecting that. But all this energy in you, you can make a difference now. You can make a choice uh, especially making the most difficult step in, steps in your life by choosing for yourself, to choose you. And that could be some life-changing event and crises being involved with that. But you're ready to take it. You're, you, you will survive. And actually after that uh, turmoil, you could say, what the full moon in the eighth house is, I hope it, it, it's not the biggest one, but it can be a small one. It can be a, a big one. Whatever it is, it's like an understanding and an epiphany. Like, oh, yeah, I should have done this long, a uh, long time ago. It's like that. You think that you're not strong enough, but you are. You are. Whatever it is, if it's like a job that you're saying. I mean, the first house is, of course, your life path. I'm talking about relationships here, but it could be a job. It could be something that is really uncomfortable for you because of that raising the bar. Raise your bar, dear Taurians. You do that anyway. You do that anyway uh, because quality in your life is so important. But now it's about you and your connections. So do so. Gemini's. This is a really, really exciting, you could say, on the one hand and on the other hand, a very um, almost healing kind of energy, but it's definitely your relationships. I mean, that moon over there in Sagittarius is in your seventh house of relationships. So things will come up for sure. 
that uh, truth and seeing the bigger picture of your connection if you are in a connection. You, you see the bigger picture. You rise above it and you see it. And the changes is about tackling your patterns of escape, escapism. Uh, it can be a little pattern, can be a big pattern, whatever it is. All this energy is in your 12th house, this Taurian energy. This, these epiphanies are coming from your dreams, by the way, or from people that passed away that are giving you hints in your dreams and connecting with you, even if you don't know it. Um, it's like the connection on the unconscious level, also with the divine, with your higher self, you name it. It's that 12th house. Um, so you're very driven by your unconsciousness now at this particular moment. So write down those dreams and uh, uh, let go and release. Uh, release a lot of your old patterns. And it's going to be reflected in how you will be able to deal in your relationships. Cancerians, this full moon is in your sixth house. So the sixth house, you know, a full moon is always an important day for you because you are ruled by the moon. You are a Cancerian after all. Even if it's in the, your sixth house, which is a very down to earth house, it's the house of your day to day life, the day to day routines that you do, your work that you do, uh, the taking care of your own health as well. So in those areas, something can become very clear to you. Um, again, health or your work and or your routines. That something can come up that shows what's going on. And it's, it's very clear to you and some sort of a insight that you have like, oh yeah, this is now a culmination. So you could be w one of those people that says like, uh, because all of this is going on in your 11th house. The Taurus house is your 11th house. So that is your goals for the future and your friends. So you could be having a totally, some sort of not easy goal in your life that you're saying that is a bit, it demands um, courage of you to put that goal in your life, to raise your bar basically on your value level. And because of that, something at your work happens that you say, for instance, I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to do this job anymore, or I'm, I'm going to do a job now. I'm, I'm, let's say that you are out of a job and um, you're not feeling good about it. You know, your health and you don't have your good routines anymore. Could be that as well, but whatever it is, there is a change here. And what inspires you and what helps you to ground is those goals that you're setting, is those friends that are telling you something that like cracks open the egg and that you're saying, of course, I'm seeing it now. So it could be a conversation that you're having with a particular friend as well that is really breaking you open to um, a new value system, of, a very good value system for your future where you raise that bar and it, it will have an effect on your day-to-day -day life and even on your health if you do so. So very interesting. Leos, this is happening in your fifth house. It's the Leo house and you are a fire sign. So normally Leo Sagittarius is a very good energy together. So normally this will be a more easy, beautiful, very nice, um, flowy kind of full moon for you. So have fun, have fun. And it's like with the moon there, uh, have fun with friends or, or with hobbies, with your children. It is uh, organizing something with other people, a great party or whatnot. This is an amazing time for you to do so. And in some sort of way, it shows you the reality and getting out of the comfort zone when it comes to your 10th house. So, and 10th house is your work, your career. And if you don't have a career, it's how you want to be seen, the, 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 um, the service that you do for um, how you can be of service to the world is also the 10th house. Even if, if you say, but I'm not working. Yes, but you're doing a service to the world if you are in a particular energy. I mean, you are going to serve way more. If you are doing like going to the gym every single day, you're making sure that you're healthy, that you are in good vibes, you are serving the world in such a big thing, in such a big way because everything is energy and that has a knock-on effect on other people around you. So it's a lot about that. It's a lot about 
oh, I'm seeing now way clearer than ever before where I need to go when it comes to career. Some of you will uh, focus um, the next year very much on career and on expanding that and getting out of that comfort zone and growing and uh, but also learning a lot and um, or you teaching and travel could be involved as well with that Jupiter there. Virgos, this is in your fourth house, this full moon. So there is an elimination, some sort of a understanding what your emotional security is all about. Isn't that a great thing? You know better than ever. You're going to be shown what you need in life, what is important for you, for the Virgo, not for all the people that you want to fix or all the people that you, um, you feel that you uh, are uh, in service for. No, it's about you, your emotional fulfillment, your emotional well-being. What do you need? What do you need? What, is, what are the things that are available but you're not seeing? Or um, what are the goals? What is the purpose of that, of that emotional groundedness, of that emotional insight? And it is reflected in the ninth house, which is that beautiful, earthly, Taurian house of yours. So all that getting out of the comfort zone and that what I was talking about is for you way easier for you Virgos together with the Capricorns. Why? Because all this energy is trining your energy. So go travel, go to the places that you're a bit scared of, go to, to do the study that you're a bit scared of, uh, go for the knowledge, go be active on that, expand, um, go for the teaching, the, 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 all of that, you know, in, it's, it's a lot about travel, not only literally, but also mentally for you and broadening your perspective, broadening that perspective for sure. And the more you feel emotionally secure, the more you will be able to be some teacher of some sort as well in your life for others, because that's the ninth house. And the ninth house is a lot about your purpose and a lot about why am I here? And um, the trust in the universe can, I think it's uncanny for Virgos because Virgos, they are a sign that want perfectionism, you know, and that that's a bit their pitfall and, and they always want to do better and so on. But now with the support of ninth house, it's almost like they trust the universe way more. And because of that, beautiful emotional comfort comes here. You know, beautiful thing for the Virgos. Librans, this is your third house, Libra and Le um, Leo. Libra and Sagittarian energy is nice. It's a sextile. And the third house is illuminated here. So that could be something becomes very clear in your relationship with siblings, your relationships with uh, the neighborhood or people in your neighborhood, your the, um, things that you want to study, things that you want to learn, skills that you want to learn. There's some sort of a culmination here. Um, short trips, you could uh, be making a short trip and it's going to be so... Uh, adventurous that you say like, I understand life way more because of that. So it's a lot about taking in information and how you process that and how it kind of in a very normal way, in a very practical way almost, you're seeing the bigger picture there. That's a beautiful thing because all this energy is going on for you in your eighth house, which is not the easiest house, but there's a Jupiter there and a North Node there. So it's almost like uh, trust and good things will come to you. That's with the Jupiter and the North Node in the eighth house. But that's, it's, it's like that letting go of the things that are out of your control. Um, and then you will see that elimination way easier of the understanding of the world and of your world around you, the, 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 the maxi world and the mini world, you could say. Um, and, um, but it's definitely epiphanies as well in the eighth house. So you understanding something, um, occult information that is coming to you could be the case as well. It could mean that financially, 
money is coming to you with this Jupiter and a North node. With this Mercury, Uranus, all of a sudden, uh, if you had been not understanding or challenges with uh, um, investments and loans or uh, you know, money that is that you loan or ma money that that is um, coming from other people, you know, inheritances, uh, uh, tax returns, all that kind of stuff. There could be now clarity coming for you, especially with this Mercury retrograde. It must have been probably not so clear for you at all. Now there is this clarity. Scorpios, this is happening in your second house, the full moon. So there is definitely knowledge available for you when it comes to your self-worth, when it comes to your resources, and uh, what, what and, and also because it's so important for a Scorpio, what is mine, what is yours, and how to um, not fall into those power struggles, you could say, right? And that is illuminated here. So um, definitely, if you are in a relationship, if you're not in a relationship, it's more about what, what other people contribute to you, their values, their, uh, their money that they give you, or and in the support, I mean, or their emotional support, their psychological understanding of things, you name it. Intimacy as well, you know, the vulnerabilities that we show to people. This is all coming to the light and coming to the service, the self-sufficiency, the I need to be like me and I need to, to see myself versus I also need to be open to receive from others. So there's something revealed there and it definitely has to do with growth in relationships because there is all that emphasis in your seventh house with Jupiter, the North Node. These are fated connections for sure. If you are single, yes, this is, is a possibility of someone that is saying something to you. You know, Mercury, Uranus, is like, oh, wow, this is so real, reality, clarity, and um, truths that are going to come up, out. And you love that, don't you? Scorpio, you always dig deep. You always want to know what, nah. uh, you know, you know, the like when you say, um, conversations between two people and uh, it's not about what they say but it's the energy behind it you know and what are they not saying and their body language that's a very scorpionic thing to know the deeper intentions of people you're gonna know now with this uh, all this energy in your seventh house and there is fated energy there for sure and there is growth and purpose of knowing uh, it could be a, someone who's even a, a, a love relationship that is a bit more like a mentor for you, that is full of purpose and full of growth. And um, could be someone foreign as well, because it's Jupiter and the North Node in the seventh house. So it's like a double whammy of foreign uh, or a different background for sure. But there is a lot to be uh, seen for you through other people. Um, and if you are in a relationship, if you are in a relationship, some truths can come out here. And um, for good or for worse, this is helping you to go further and to find meaning in your future connections. Sagittarians, yes, this is your full moon, right? And uh, that's the energy around your full moon. So it's always a relationship thing when we have the full moon in our sign, because especially with the moon in our sign, it shows that we are going to show what we need. It's going to be, it doesn't matter if you're uh, a Cancerian, a Taurian, uh, um, a Gemini, an Aries, it doesn't matter. This shows with the moon in Sagittarius in your first house, whether you have a, a Sagittarius rising or the sun, uh, the moon in Sagittarius, it shows like it's going to show your needs, what you need in life, what is important to feel comfortable, to feel uh, nurtured, to feel supported. But yes, there's, there's this, there, blah, 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 I can't talk here. There's this other person as well, or, um, or other people, you could say, the seventh house where, where the sun is. So they're also going to shine and say what they want and say who they are. So that's a beautiful thing. It's like a re it's like a balancing out of those energies. Um, but the Taurian focus for you is on your sixth house, is on your 
growth when it comes to your health, how you deal with that physically, mental, and of course, that has a knock on effect mentally as well, but also growth that is possible for your work. Um, because you're feeling better about yourself, you're feeling better about the balance with other people and connections, you can grow better then. You can uh, grow better when it comes to your work, when it comes to how you can be of service in the world as well. And um, so definitely for a lot of Sagittarians, uh, there is more work possible, but in a good way, not a, because it's Jupiter, right? Jupiter, the North, were, uh, North Node, that is more suited to your destiny, you could say. That's a beautiful thing. I remember when I had Jupiter in the sixth house, uh, and it was on my... Saturn, I suspect, yeah. It was really like uh, um, breaking free. Like I had more work, but it was the work that I love to do, which is fun, right? It's, it's fun, it's real, it's Taurus, it's real. Um, so nice energy if you are ready to expand when it comes to your work. And if it's not your work, it's your health. Are you ready to do some more exercises, to um, enjoy your body more? To enjoy it, to take care of you in, in a healthy way, whether it is your diet or whether it is going to the gym or whatever it is, you know. Um, so good for you. I remember Jupiter is with the North Node. You are Jupiter. So you are having an opportunity for like a catapult to your future, right? And you're an adventurous person for sure. I mean having that Sagittarian energy. So you will go for it, for sure. You will go and jump on that horse and take that leap of faith and go after it. And this is definitely finding purpose in, the day to, in your day-to-day -day life. So making it very real, because you are very real now. <laughs> Not that you are... I mean, sometimes Sagittarians, they can be a little bit like... Uh, it's very abstract energy. But when the ruler of it is in Taurus, it's not abstract. It's like those abstract abilities, putting it here on the 3D level. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Capricorns, this full moon in your 12th house. So this is some sort of a release for you, a release of old patterns that are not suiting for you. And uh, because you identify with good health and with good work and whatnot. So... Uh, with that, that energy in your sixth house in Gemini. So it's time to release. It's time to, what is not yours, to let it go. And um, by uh, introspection, the moon there in the 12th house is about like not being lonely, but to isolate yourself a little bit, just to be in your own energy. You know, is those walks on the sea. I always think about the 12th house walking uh, along the shores of the seaside and you're just with the or you're swimming in the sea and you're giving away your problems to the sea <laughs> so to, it, it's all kind of like a meditative state you could say but it's about that release what is no longer yours you give it away to god if you like or the nature the universe and all of that good energy that good expansive uh energy that is fated as well with the north node there is in your fifth house which is the house of romance the house of expression so you're gonna have more of that if you want to if you are going to release your luggage and your baggage that's no longer yours and that is done the the, the karmic cycle that is closing then you will have a lot of capacity to grow when it comes to your fifth house to to start that own business that you want or to have more fun with your kids uh, or your kids could be going through this expansive, maybe you have a child that goes to college, for instance, and they are growing and they are telling stories and that has a knock-on effect on you. You're growing as well and you're seeing life larger uh, as well because of your kids or you fall in love or you want to have a kid uh, or you fall in love indeed and you fall in love with someone who's very Jupiterian, North Node-like, which is very important for your, your growth and who can be someone from abroad or a different background. But that is very real. You know, it's raw, real, but also very purposeful and uh, benefic, you could say. Having your best interest. All this energy, Mercury, Uranus 
in your fifth house, uh, someone could say something to you, a lover, uh, you know, it's fifth house related, but that has to do with a heart connection here. Whether that is a child or someone that you deeply love or in love with, it could really break open that perspective for you. Beautiful, because also this Taurian energy is trining your energy, so go for it. So have fun, have fun, do some things that you enjoy, for sure, More, do more of that. All the hobbies, um, and all of them, really, with this Jupiter and the North Node. Aquarians, this is happening in your 11th house. This is nice. This is nice because Aquarius and Sagittarius, it's a sextile energy that goes well with each other. And the moon there, wow, your moon in the 11th house, that is like um, plan something with friends, you know. Um, it could be so enjoyable, so much fun, so much really enjoyment and lightness and, and um, inspired energy. Uh, do something together with like-minded people. You will have so much fun. You will feel that you understand the bigger picture so way more better. And so that you can grow when it comes to comforting you. That's for the Aquarians with all that energy in your fourth house. It's about comforting yourself. It's about self-soothing energy. It's about you being your own parent. It's all that good, juicy stuff. Jupiter, the North Node, all in the fourth house. If it's not that, you know, on one level, it's emotional support. If it's not that, it's literally your home. So some of you could be leaving your old homes, going to a new home. It's all very uncomfortable and so on. But ultimately, it's to give you more space. It's to give you more luxury. I mean, it's in Taurus after all. So very, very juicy energy for you in that fourth house. It's actually feeling better, literally in your home, but also with yourself, because you nurture yourself in a very motherly way with Jupiter and a North Node there. And finding more meaning and purpose uh, just at home, right? Um, so that could be the case. But um, very expansive energy for sure for you. And... Um, yeah, I kind of like it with all that jolly, uh, fla very flamboyant energy coming your way. Pisces, this is happening in your 10th house, this full moon. So there could be something illuminating that is very important uh, to restore your balance between home, family life, your family life, your home life versus your work. So there could be some changes in the workplace and, and you see in your career and you're seeing the bigger picture and um, that has an effect on expanding and growing very fast and very real when it comes to your understanding, um, your communication your connections with people like siblings, people in your environment, because all of this Taurian energy is in your third house. So there is an opportunity here to travel more, short trips, learn more, learn skills, and definitely the ones that you are afraid of, but that can, very practical ones. Like I'm, I'm thinking now of driving, for instance, right? When you're afraid of driving and you have Jupiter and a North Node there in the third house, it could mean that just because you learn how to drive, you can have more opportunities in your work, for instance, with that 10th house uh, illuminating. It's a simple example, but it's that kind of energy. So definitely um, also Mercury Uranus, truths coming out of siblings, of people that are in your neighborhood, of people around you, you speaking your truth, but probably more another person because Mercury is the ruler of the seventh house. It's in the third house. So probably lots of truths now that come out of the blue and now you have that information and now you can tackle more and a couple of things that you couldn't tackle before because you didn't have that knowledge. So that piece of information that was missing um, and that can... Um, make and expand your life in a way better way, in a way better way, of course, in a way better way. Anyway, so um, it's quite important for you, you know, when you have 
planets around 13 degrees of, of Pisces, this is a very important full moon for you where you can make some changes for sure. Also in how other people, what you contribute to the world, to society. You know, that's also your 10th house. If you say, Vila, I, I, I don't work anymore or, uh, or, or I'm just now in a time in my life where I'm not working, the 10th house is what you contribute. Your, it's your second descendant. It's how people view you. How do you want to be seen? So you're going to see that with the bigger picture. And of course, of course, you are Jupiter. The, your ancient ruler is Jupiter. And this Jupiter is in that third house. So it's so good for you to be very busy, to communicating a bit here and a bit there. But with the North Node, there's something faded here happening uh, with this third house, with your communication, with information that's coming to you. The right, you know, the right place, being the right person on the right place is very much you in itself. But now it's even more with this energy. So, um, yeah, I wish you all the best. This was the full moon in Sagittarius. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.